See, we're set apart. We're not called to eat what the world eats. We will not give in to panic and fear and doubt and anxiety. We will hope in the Lord our God. Come on. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. This is Living Truth. Welcome to Living Truth. We're so glad you're here to join us in this time of worship as we learn from God's Word and grow spiritually in Christ together. We invite you to stay connected during the week using our resources. We have daily devotionals and an archive of our past messages available for you online at livingtruth.ca. Today, we're hearing from our guest speaker, Cheryl Nemhart. Cheryl is a speaker, author, and social justice advocate who has become known as an important storyteller in Canada, especially in the arts and entertainment industry. Cheryl has dedicated most of her life to community service and helping those who are in need. Her message for us today is called Dare to Hope. Let's join Cheryl for today's message. Well, good morning, people's family. It is so, so good to be before you. Uh, I've been excited just to deliver uh, what I hope is an encouraging word for you all this morning. And I got a question for you. Let's start with a question. What do you do when what's in front of you seems impossible to cross? And what do you do when your present reality looks nothing like what God has promised you? I don't know about you, but for me, 2020 and 2021 feels like an unexpected surprise surgery that I did not sign up for. I feel like someone penciled me in and put me on the table and without permission started to cut and tear and open and rip. And I don't know about you, but it's not what I signed up for. But I believe this is God's divine operating table. I truly believe that if we can get the right optics, we can see God's hand in and through all of this and how we as believers individually and as the church collectively will come through better, closer, more on fire and connected to God. I want to start off by giving you two scriptures that I want to really anchor this word in today. And they're found in Joshua 1 verses 6 to 9. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. Be strong and very courageous, the Lord says to Joshua. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them. Neither turn to the right nor to the left, and then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. This is the part I love. What instruction? Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Amen to that. This is my command. Yet again, here is the second time around. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. What an empowering, liberating, life-changing word to Joshua. And I want to jump down to another pivotal moment that will ignite our faith today. We come on the scene in Daniel 3, verses 17 and 18, and we know the story so well, the three Hebrew boys about to be thrown in the furnace for taking a stand for what they believe in. And this is what they say to King, to the King Nebuchadnezzar. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, can I just say that again? But even if he doesn't, we want it to be clear to you that we will never serve your gods 
or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Like Joshua and the children of Israel, this current season feels like an uh, uncrossable river of Jordan and that we sit and wonder on the shores of it, how are we going to get through this? And how are we going to get past this? And what will life look like beyond this moment in this so-called new normal? For me, it seems like the gulf between the promises of God and myself are equivalent to the size of Canaan in Joshua's day. Last year alone, due to pandemic, existing illnesses, and some other unexpected things, I actually lost seven people, seven deaths due to COVID and other related illnesses. It was a year that I felt like every time I took a breath, a wave would crash me down again. And every time I got up and took a breath, another wave would crash me down. And I wonder if there's anyone that feels that way today. You feel like it's been too much. You feel overwhelmed. You feel like you can't catch your breath. I stand with you, my brother and my sister. For those of you whose hope has been wavering, you've been feeling overwhelmed by the experiences of these past 11 months. I have a word of encouragement for you today. God is calling us to hope again. Can I say that one more time? God is calling us to hope again. And I know that that sounds cliche, but it has such a weighty meaning if you would open up your wounded heart to this word today. God is calling us to hope in him again. God is calling us to hope in his word and to believe it once again. God is calling us to hope in his promises over our lives and our family and our business and our church again. And this one is hard. God is calling us to hope in humanity again, to love our neighbor again as ourselves. And for some of you, God is calling you to hope in the church again. You feel isolated and separated, and some of you have been wounded and felt like you have become victims of pains and church hurts, and I am here to tell you directly express mail that God sent me here today to ask you to hope in the church and in the power of his love again. God wants to reignite your hope. You know, so many think of hope in a way that is so light. (laughs) Can I be honest? When I think about hope, I had a beautiful um, mural on my wall growing up. It was this gorgeous poem and this beautiful painting. And it uh, it really encaptures the wrong perspective of hope. So I want to shatter some thinking today. But let's talk about how we have seen hope until this point. I'm going to change my voice because I think it's funny. I think we need to, I want to speak it like I feel it. Can I do that? We're family. Here's, here's, Here's the beautiful quote. Hope is like a, it's like a drop of honey. It's, it's, a, it's a field of tulips blooming in the springtime. Hope is a whispered promise. It's a soft, soft rain. It's the perfect punctuation mark at the end of a sentence. And here's the only statement that is actually true. And it's the only thing in the world keeping me afloat. When you think of hope in that way, in that fluffy, warm, shiny, uh, cotton candy, teddy bear cuddle kind of way, it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? It sounds wonderful. But here's the reality. That warm and fuzzy hope will not keep you through a storm. That warm and fuzzy ideal, that syrupy, sweet, saccharine, sweet and low ideal of hope will not keep you, my friend, during a global pandemic. 
That hope won't keep you through a crisis. It won't keep you through job loss and businesses closing left, right, and center. It won't keep you through the worst economic downturn since the Depression. It will not keep you through racial tensions and political upheaval and illnesses and death and loss and loss and loss. That kind of hope won't keep you. And so I encourage you today to open your eyes to a new understanding of hope. You see, it's easy to have warm and fuzzies when we're in church. It's easy to have warm and fuzzies when we are with a group of people and we're with the masses and we've got people surrounding us. And it's easy to have warm and fuzzies while we're sitting in our homes watching a beautiful virtual service. But the truth is that you and I cannot take our pastors, we cannot take our worship leaders, we can't take our worship teams and put them in our pockets and take them with us wherever we go. I'd love to have, I'd love to have Hillsong on speed dial, but I, I sure don't. We have to know God for ourselves. We have to encourage ourselves in God. And sometimes that journey looks like loneliness, looks like being alone. I've come to shift your thinking from a warm and fuzzy ideal of hope to hopefully have you see hope as a spiritual weapon, something that you can wield against the enemy and darkness and heaviness and sadness and gloom with a single blow. I'm talking about hope in God. Hope that will protect your heart and your mind when the world is raging. The Lord gave me three simple words that I want to share with you today. Dare to hope. Dare to hope. Hope in God is not a passive thing. It's intentional. It's active. When fear and doubt try to overtake us and darkness is all around, hope recalls. Hope remembers what he has done for us, how he has answered prayer. Hope allows us to remember the word of God that has been spoken over our lives. You see, hope has a memory. And I want to close the door on something that I've phrased spiritual amnesia. Can I walk you through that? Spiritual amnesia, the cycle is simply like this. We're in a situation, it's a crisis, it's a 911. We don't know how we're going to get out. Our back is against the wall. We cry out to the Lord. We're desperate. We need him. We cry. We gather friends and family. We pray. And God answers in ways we didn't expect, understand, or hope for. He goes beyond, as the Bible says, what we ask or think. And then we come out of it rejoicing, celebrating, testifying, sharing the good news of how God made a way. And then the enemy comes. And darkness comes, and life knocks us down again, strips us of our joy, our peace, our focus, our very sense of identity, and we find ourselves right in this spot that is so amazing to me. We don't just lose a little faith. We almost border on atheism. Follow me. We ask these questions. God, are you even here? Do you even hear me? Are you present? Do you care? And this is the cycle that we go through as believers. And you know what? The children of Israel did the same thing. The Bible says that God stepped in like a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the children of Israel, led by Moses, were given their freedom from bondage and slavery in Egypt by a series of miraculous plagues that opened the door for their exodus. My friends, they saw God work firsthand, directly through Moses as he parted the Red Sea. They wandered through the Sinai wilderness 
They experience supernatural providence, such as the supply of manna falling from the sky. Can you imagine just seeing that, seeing the provision coming from on high? They saw water coming from a rock. They literally saw the Spirit of God move in tangible, physical ways. Can you imagine, church? They received divine revelation directly to who God was, and yet, at the first sign of struggle, at the first sign of hardship, they forgot every bit of it. They grew fearful. They complained. They asked Moses if he led them there to die. They were terrified by these so-called giants in the promised land that they refused to enter, forgetting the God that they served. They even turned away from God himself, the Bible says, and they made golden calves to worship because God wasn't moving quick enough. And now after Moses' death, Joshua is called into leadership called to fulfill the promise that was once made to the children of Israel, to cross over into the River Jordan just like Moses did, and he will step into that promised land and solidify the heritage that has been foretold for the children of God. The Bible says that the Lord instructs him that he only needs to do one thing, to be strong and courageous and to remember all that God has done. That's two things to be strong and courageous, and to remember all that God has done. You see, there's a power, church. There's a breakthrough that comes when we remember the faithfulness of our God. There's a breakthrough that happens when we remember all the times that God answered our prayers. When we remember who he has been in times past for our family, for our marriage, for our children. When we remember the times that God was faithful in our times of sickness and trouble and despair, I have great news today for you, people's family. It's the best news of all. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. And if he did it for the children of Israel, he can do it for you and I again. This is the God we serve. This is the God who will bring us through the pandemic. The same God who will help us move and navigate through global crisis. He is the same God through job loss, through business closing. He is the same God through the worst economic downturn since the Depression. He is the same God through racial tensions and uprisings and cries for justice. He is the same God through this crazy political upheaval, through illness and death and loss. He is the same. He does not change. He is faithful, and he is the one that we place our hope in today. He's the same God, church. Isaiah 46, 8, 10 says this. Do not forget this. Keep this in mind. Remember this, you guilty ones. Remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God and there is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan, listen, will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. Here's what I know. The sovereignty of God is so hard to understand. It's so hard for us to to wrap our heads around it. Can we be honest? But the great news is we don't have to. The sovereignty of God is not for us to understand. It's just for us to trust in. And that's all God asks us to do. He has passed our finding out. The Bible says his ways are higher than our ways. He only asks that we trust him in it and through it. God is asking you to be strong and to be of good courage in these hard and tough times. God is encouraging us like he did Joshua to meditate once again 
on his word. And I know what it's like. I have been in one of the darkest periods of my life where I did not even want to pick up the word of God, have a devotion, play a worship song. I wanted nothing to do with that stuff. And it was the very thing that brought me back to life. Hope is a weapon. Hope is a spiritual weapon against the darkness. You see, there are many that have dared, have dared to hope that give us example today. And we can look to them as the ambassadors of faith, the Bible says. Elijah hoped in the God of provision when he remained in the posture of prayer, asking time and time again for rain in the time of drought. Can you imagine six no's, no's, no, 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 and then yes. Abraham, the Bible says, dared to hope in the God of promise, willing to sacrifice his very son Isaac on the altar, believing that if he should die, God would raise him up from the dead. And then my favorite, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They dared to hope in the God of protection, a hope that burned brighter and hotter than the very flames that King Nebuchadnezzar would try to inflict upon them. And like the three Hebrew boys, I believe that there is a powerful lesson we can draw today. Just like the three Hebrew boys refused to bow in the time of challenge and hardship before a false god, I want to encourage you not to fall under society's pressure to walk away from your faith. And I know I'm speaking to someone today. The Bible says they refused to eat the food of the palace because it went against their faith. Only vegetables and water, and just relax, it's not a vegan moment. I know there's some meat eaters out there. It's not a vegan moment. This is a biblical principle. They trusted in the Lord their God, and they put that trust to the test. And I believe, like the three Hebrew boys, that we're being challenged today to not eat what society is feeding us in this time. You see, the world is trying to feed us a constant diet right now of fear, of panic, of hatred, of racism, of conspiracy, of divisiveness, of hopelessness. You only need to turn on the TV or you pick up your phones to confirm that word. But we have the power and the ability to refuse that today and to hope in our God. Somewhere along the way, we as sons and daughters have lost sight. We have changed our diet from the word of God and fasting and worship and prayer, and in a pursuit for relevance, we've lost our reverence for a holy God. And so I invite you to pick back up these spiritual disciplines again in the hard times. This is truly where your strength and your joy and peace come from. The ability to withstand the storm, the ability to clear the path of the noise is in those spiritual disciplines. You see, we're set apart, we're not called to eat what the world eats. We will not give in to panic and fear and doubt and anxiety. We will hope in the Lord our God. As I close, I want to read this scripture to you. It's found in Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, and I'm, I'm reading from the New International Version. Praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He lifts up kings, disposes kings, raises others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals the deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in the darkness and light dwells in him. Family, this is the God we serve. May we never forget in times of crisis People's family, I dare you to hope. Hope is a weapon that pushes back the overwhelming darkness that would try to surround us. So let's hope. Let hope rise in every worshiper once again, in every heart that sings a new song unto God. Let hope rise in every intercessor's heart now as we cry out once again, believing God for the nation's and for those who are marginalized. Let hope rise in every peacemaker as we cry out for justice and unity and not grow weary in this good work. Let hope rise and burn in every heart here today with renewal and revival and regeneration. In the midst of the storm, we will dare to hope. 
When our back is against the wall, we will dare to hope. When it doesn't look like it, we will dare to hope in our God who brings us the victory. Church, when it seems that there is no help, know that God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. I want to end with this benediction. It's an old one, and it's such a powerful one for this moment. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. We will dare to hope, despite what it looks like right now. Amen. God bless you. Tune in next week for an Easter message from Brett McBride. This is Living Truth. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope and who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Sing it out. the empty grave, Lord.